Hello! My lovely husband got me these beautiful fountain pens for our anniversary. He always knows what I like. <laughs> so I thought I'd unbox them on camera and we can look at them together. Yay! Let's start with the Kawiku. I really hope that's how you pronounce it. I originally thought this was Japanese, but it's actually made in Germany, so I do apologize if I've mispronounced that. Kaweko? Perhaps? Is that W or V pronunciation? Anyway, this is the classic sport fountain pen and it came in white and black, but I really like white pens. I don't have many of those, so I like to have the unusual colours. Of course, it's going to be super difficult to open. There we go. I got it. Okay, finally. Oh, look at that lovely gold writing. That's pretty. That's so shiny as well. I thought it was a bit scratched, but it's actually on the box itself. You can see there's a little bit of scratching there. And I think I might have just made the whole screen just flash then. Oops. <laughs> okay, let's gently take it out of the container, if I can. There we go. It's very light. Let's open it up. I never know if they're a pull or a unscrew, but here we go. It is made of plastic, this one but it's got a nice lid. Let's lid it. <laughs> the lid's almost as big as the whole pen. I think the idea is that you post it on the back and then you get a full-size pen like that. That's pretty cool, I like that. It's got a very pretty gold nib and let's just try not to get too much reflection in there. And this is a medium nib, I think. Yes, it's got an M on there. So let's just have a little look inside and see if there's any cartridges. There is. It's a tiny one. Look at it. We've got a piston as well. And it's supposed to be for the Kawiko Sport. It is a tiny one. So I'm going to see if this actually fits in. We weren't sure if this was the right one. I may have known I was going to get this pen. <laughs> but let's see if it goes on. Uh-oh. Oh no, it does. It fits! Woohoo! So I shall have to fill this up with ink. Yay! I always prefer to have a piston and fill the ink up myself, but I'll keep that as a spare. I usually have them as spares. There we go. I'm in focus. So I'll pop that on for now. And put the lid on. So we'll lay that over to one side and let's open the other one. Now this is a Traveller's Company brass fountain pen. I've been eyeing this up for quite a while. I have the Traveller's Company passport size journal and I am going to do a video on all of these things but there's a couple of other things I really would like to get and I might try and order those first and hopefully once everything's here then I will do a video on all of the Traveller's Company things but I cannot wait to open this pen. It's so pretty. Look how shiny it is. Oh my goodness, I got that open with a little bit more ease than I was expecting actually. <laughs> oh, that came out nicely. Such beautiful Japanese packaging. Now this one's from Japan. It says, this is a fountain pen that can be stored compactly, F-type, so it's a fine tip and it comes with some black ink. So let's open it up. Ooh, how fancy is that? Let's just I'll take the pen out and I'll hold this up for a moment so you can have a read of that. Pause it and read it at your leisure. Alright, moving that. Yeah, this one's quite a lot heavier. This is definitely brass. So it has Traveller's Company made in Japan embossed on it. And it's also another little pen that you pop it on the back to post it and make a full-size pen but that is beautiful that is really gorgeous and it says Traveller's Company and F on the nib there in a silver or I'm not too sure what the metal is on that it might actually say in that instruction book and we'll just undo it I just love how compact that is it's so cute oh wow it unscrews all the way up here And, you know, I'm wondering if 
this is the same as the Kawako Sport. I wonder if that piston would fit in this one as well. In which case I'll have to get a second. <laughs> but those look exactly the same, don't they? That's the Kaweco one, and this is the Traveler's Company one. Scissor! I need a scissor! There we go. So let's have a look. They look pretty much identical, so I may have to try putting the piston into this pen as well and see if I can get a second one, because that would be awesome. Alright, I pulled the piston out. I'm just going to have a little look and see because usually they often um, make them so that they'll only fit their brand of pen which is super annoying when you want but sometimes they interchange I think that is slightly different oh well it was a close call never mind I'll um, just use some of the cartridges for this until I can find a piston or some sort of converter for it in the meantime I also got a box of these with it so I can fill up my pen with some nice black ink let me put these together and we'll have a look at them I just realized they're all in pieces here <laughs> and here we have two very pretty pens this one is much heavier and I think no okay the sport is a bit shorter than the traveler's pen when you put them side by side and when they're posted and if we take the lids off this one's longer I think than this one <laughs> how interesting there we go there's a size comparison but they're both super compact and super cute this brass one is just absolutely stunning so in love with them I, I like both of them I really do but I think the brass one is going to be the, the cream of the crop there. They're gorgeous. So I think I'll fill them with ink and we'll have a bit of a draw or write with them and see what they look like. And I just realized my scissors have been in that corner this whole time. Okay, so I've just gone and put the cartridges in that came with the pens because... Oh, that one squeaks when you <laughs> close it. Because I just thought that would be easiest for this video and I might as well use them up and then go on with some of my other inks so this one's got a black one and the uh, Kaweko has got a blue cartridge in it so we'll use them just put them back together I've already got loads of fingerprints on this one <laughs> it's not going to stay t clean for very long I don't think and I'll post this one I've got here some Rhodia paper it's really nice smooth paper that you can use fountain pens on so I thought I'd just do a couple of tests quickly on that and then I might do a bit of a drawing so let's find <laughs> sorry I've got some notes on these ones so I will keep them I tend to plan in this book so let's start out with the what is it travelers travelers company pen this one's actually quite heavy it really is it feels really weighty let's just write that down Travelers. I hope I spelled that right. <laughs> no, they spell it with one L. Uh, in UK English, we tend to spell things with two Ls. So there you go. Sorry about that. Company. Um, fountain pen. Pen. Fine. Yep. Okay. Oops. I'll just write travelers underneath. It just never feels right to them, but that is the name of the company, so I better actually write it. Okay, and you can get nice fine lines. Let's just do some hatching. I really do prefer a fine nib or an extra fine and I think there is an ultra extra fine out there which I really want to find one of those pens to see how fine it is but I guess this would be about a, a 0.38 maybe in line let's have a look I've actually got a, a rollerball here which is a 0.38 so I'll just have a look and see 
what that looks like next to it. Of course this one I put aside because it doesn't work. Oh no. Okay, that one's going in the bin. <laughs> Let me just grab another. I've got another one somewhere in here. Let's try that again. So I've got another one here. Yeah, looking at that, I'd say pretty much the same line width. And let me just use this again. Obviously when you draw flat, you will get a slightly thicker line than if you draw on an angle. You'll get a thinner line like that. The nib is not flexible. It's so you can get ones that are. It's a tiny bit, but I never want to push too hard and break them unless it actually says flexible nib. So yeah, it's really smooth. I'm not getting any um, skipping, you know, even if I draw fast. This paper is so beautiful to work on. I love it so much. It's so smooth. So let's try the Kaweco Sport and see how that compares. Now this one has a medium nib, so I'm expecting it to be a bit bigger and thicker. Um, so let's write down, oh it's juicy, the thing with medium nibs is you get a lot more ink coming out at one time so I quite like that as well when you want that juicy look and sometimes I find that a medium nib is really really great for writing and a fine nib is more useful for drawing. That's just in my own opinion, being an artist I tend to draw with my fountain pens more than write with them. but. Let's just put Kaweco Sport White pen <laughs> White body Medium nib This one also flows really beautifully And you can get fairly decent thin lines as well Let me just draw up like that So I mean that's pretty good There we go. And then you can get relatively thicker lines. So I've got other medium nib pens which seem to be thicker than this one. This one's actually not bad at all. It's somewhere in between. Probably about a 0 0.5 to a 0.7 I would say. Somewhere in that range. 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 on the nib. And this one up here would be a point. I'm guessing here, I'm not exactly a pen nib expert, but this is just on my own personal experience with pens. Alright, so I think I'm going to do a drawing, probably with this one because it's got black in it. I just wanted to do some drawing with a fountain pen. I do quite often do that. I do use a lot of these Uniball Eye um, rollable pens because they have waterproof ink in them and they're very, very reliable. They give you a very consistent line. But there is something about working with a fountain pen that is a lot more fun <laughs> sometimes. So let's get a drawing going. Today I'm using my Clairefontaine Gold Line Mixed Media Sketchbook. And I've made a vague pencil outline here just of the basic shape of it because drawing a circle with a pen straight away is not going to happen. <laughs> it will be more like an oval I think so I need a little bit of help here just to draw that circle. So I've done a basic pen outline and I'm going to go in with the fountain pen, go over all of this outline and then embellish it with more detail which I will do without the pencil underneath. I started out with drawing over my basic outline. I just wanted to get some of the main shape of the pocket watch in. And that circle was still difficult to draw even though I had the pencil guideline. I made quite a mess of it. You could see all of my scratchy lines and later on you'll see how I fixed that up because yeah it looks pretty bad at the moment but I just kept on going and I went over all of the circles that I'd drawn with that pen and this is the middle of it with the clock face so I went over most of it with the black but you could see there's still a part of it that I left white for now and I started embellishing and then I thought I'd better go over the main part of the design that I'd drawn out in pencil and then I'll add all of the details later. I was going off 
the reference photo which I've linked in the description below but in the end I just kind of couldn't be bothered looking at it and I just started doodling and making up my own design inside so it's based off a photo but really it just ended up being my own thing and you could see this is where I've started just making up a design in the gaps here the only trouble with making up a design, as you can see, is I made some mistakes. I, I remembered there to rub out my pencil. I made a few errors and because I was just drawing with the pen and not a pencil, I could not rub the mistakes out. And I don't know if you can notice it yet, but some of those little twirly bits inside, I actually did two of them upside down. So that comes into play in a little moment where you can see I'm doing the circles around and I had to go inside and I'm sitting there going what is wrong with this and then I realized that I'd put those two little inner twirly bits on the wrong side so I just kind of tried to make it up and then I realized that one of my circles was smaller than the others and I'd added those little petals to it but none of the others have it so yeah it's a slightly wonky watch here but never mind it's not particularly noticeable and seriously it's just in my sketchbook I was just trying to demonstrate the use of drawing with a fountain pen because if you've never drawn with one I highly recommend it it's really fun they're so fantastic I love the old-fashioned style and if you can get a converter for your fountain pens it's really really fun filling them up with bottled ink rather than using the little plastic cartridges that come with most fountain pens. I also think it's a lot better for the environment because you're not chucking out disposable plastic. You're reusing one converter and getting a bottle of ink and just taking out the ink that you need when you want it. So because that ink is completely water soluble I decided to get some water and brush over everything. And as you can see, the ink is running out. I highly recommend using a Taclon brush rather than a natural hair brush because it holds a bit less water and it is a little bit easier to control. You could see around that circle, I'd managed to blur out any extra lines that I'd had there that I didn't like. And so it looks a lot neater now. And then I went over my hatched lines because I just felt like doing it. And as you can see, when I'm painting out the ink oh yes and I got rid of those extra petals there you can see how the ink is not purely black and there was quite a purple undertone once I'd diluted it out and some inks may be bluish or reddish it just depends on the brand and I'm just going over everything now and painting out a little bit of a gentle shadow in some of the parts which I am imagining are a little further back and then I left the embellishments on top as plain white just to give depth to the clock and try and get some interest and then I got the fountain pen again and decided to paint a bit of a shadow so it's not just floating in space and I went over the wet area with the pen again just to get an interesting effect there and here we go slightly imperfect but never mind you get the idea so yes you can pretty much make a pretty fun looking artwork with just a fountain pen and water soluble ink and a brush with water so that's always a bit of fun i really love using fountain pens either for writing or for drawing and sketching the only annoying thing with the brass pen is that it is metal and it does make your hands smell you it's that brassy smell so it's really awesome except for that. <laughs> so I'm planning to do a video not too far in the distant future with all of my fountain pens. I thought it might be interesting to show my collection and I will definitely be adding in the Traveller's Company brass pen and the Kaweco Sport pen into that collection. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. It was a little impromptu because I got the pens for our anniversary and I just thought it would be fun to show them. And I hope you're all having a fantastic day out there. We'll see you all again really soon. Swatch you later. Bye.